Raise a hand if you were terrified of autism and people with it due to the way it was portrayed in TV. I know, right? Like, I didn't think about it till I saw the Girl Meets World clips where they where their friend Farkle is diagnosed with Asperger's, a form of autism that has since been shut down due to people seen as disrespectful and it also being used with the Nazis. Um, and everyone began treating him as though he got diagnosed with a deadly disease. And it's not just one example either. There are plenty of examples in early 2000s media, and even earlier, where an autism diagnosis was treated as the death of a person or they were the holders of a deadly virus. And you can see how that affects people's day-to-day -day lives now. Even with autism portrayed in more current movies and shows, granted, they have gotten better, but there are still ones out there that are quite inhumane. But even, but enough with movies and TV. What about writing? Granted, I don't think there are any characters in any books I've read recently that are clearly autistic, at least at the top of my head. And honestly, even googling books with autistic characters, there aren't that many options either. Granted, I haven't read any of the options that popped up, but some have been on my wish list for a while solely for the cover, because I judge solely by the cover. And chapter lengths. Like for example, there's a story called Witchlings by Clarabelle A. Ortega. I know that's on my wish list, and to my surprise, it popped up when I searched stories with autistic characters. So that's good to know. But anyway, there aren't many options out there with books and stories having autistic characters. For fiction ones at least. But I'm confident there will be many more in the future. And in order for there to be more in the future, people kind of need to be educated on, on autism in order to be able to write about the characters without resorting to stereotypes. But it can get tiring to do all that research and end up seeing points that contradict each other and end up worried about being cancelled and end up choosing to not write at all slash fall onto stereotypes slash just not write any characters with different minds yada yada. So instead, I'll be doing my own research, condensing it as best I can in this episode, possibly make a part 2 if I notice it's getting a little long, and continuously add in the points that everybody is different and one person's autism is not going to be exact replica of another's. And no, not, all, not everybody is a little autistic. And yes, I'll be providing all my sources in the description of this episode. This episode will be separated into 10 different sections. 1. What is autism? 2. How the media views autism then versus now. 3 causes for autism, 4. Issues due to autism, 5. Social life and autism, 6. Hyperfixations and autism, 7. The ups and downs of autism, 8. Autism then versus now, 9. Why so many people get diagnosis nowadays compared to back then, 10. How to form a character with autism without it being problematic to most people because it's the internet, people are going to get upset either way. Anyways, starting off with section 1, what is autism? Well, for start starters, aut Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, but known as autism for short, is a develop disability developed by differences in the brain that can cause de developmental issues. I'm not wearing my glasses, so everything's just slightly blurry. Um, these differences can often lead to issues with social interaction and communication, repetitive and or restricted behaviors and interests, and quite frequently can lead to anxiety due to social and behavioral issues. It is commonly diagnosed in young boys due to being a young boy being one of the criteria back then. But luckily, with some updates in the system, young girls and women are now able to get their right, rightful diagnosis as well. And of course, it is called a spectrum for a reason. This is because everyone's brains are different. Granted, some behaviors can be similar enough from person to person to be linked to autism, but that doesn't mean that they are all still the same. For instance, people who have issues with loud noises or certain scents may end up shutting down when being faced with them, but being social is perfectly fine and manageable. 
while others may face little to no sensory issues, but people who but people are a nightmare and will definitely lead to them shutting down. And for the people mouthing disagreements to themselves, no, the person with sensory issues, but like the people, just ha but like people just has a strong opinion. What? No, the people with sensory issues, but like people just have a strong opinion yet. Uh, I think I made it tight. And for the people mouthing disagreements to themselves, no, the person with sensory issues, but like, but likes people, just has a strong opinion. Yes, olives are. Yeah, I I don't know what that point was, but anyway, yes, olives are gross, and people are allowed to spit them out. No, that doesn't make them autistic. Autistic people literally shut down or nearly shut down if faced with sensory issues. And no. The person who doesn't like social situations isn't just an introvert. There's a difference between being an introvert and being autistic. If you tried listening to people's stories, then you'd understand. I'd recommend Illimation. She's an amazing animation YouTuber that shares her stories and experiences, and the video of hers that talks about autism will be linked along with my other sources. She goes briefly into what some shutdowns can look like so that can give you a quick viewpoint into what it is I am talking about. Section 2. How the media views autism then versus now. I'd say it's pretty safe to say that before mental health became a big deal online and in our day-to-day -day lives, many serious topics were greatly misrepresented and made fun of, and even when topics such as PTSD, autism, anxiety, and depression were on the rise, we could all see a, the clear pushback by those of older generations. For example, think of those news clips you'd see from time to time where news anchors would make fun of people pushing for mental health awareness or people talking about their experiences. And sure, we do still see these sorts of pushbacks in our current days, but it's nothing compared to the early 2000s. In the early 2000s, we were faced with everyone around us and in our lives talking down on mental health, saying things like, therapy is for crazy people. It's not. And ADHD just means you're lazy and refuse to focus. And the media we've watched as kids back then only proved it. Think back to the example I provided earlier with the show Girl Meets World, where Farkle finds out he's autistic. I'll see if I can provide a portion of the clip in this episode, and if not, then you'll be able to find it in, its, it in the description. In the clip, you can see his friends acting as though he's dying or is some sort of freak that they're refusing to accept. Even in the end of the clip, they say that people with autism can't understand emotions or love, which to an extent is true, but with the way it's presented can make them appear inhumane. And they even take it to a point where their friend Farkle says, You guys are my best friends. Please promise me one thing. Please don't ever let me not understand love. That's where one of the biggest underlying issues are, which is almost as bad as the way his friends are behaving to the news entirely. This episode fa fails to include representations of other forms of autism, and not in the not understand love portion was just the nail in the coffin that would occur by the online community just a few years after the airing of that episode. Think of it this way. If you were diagnosed with autism, or had someone you knew diagnosed with autism when you were young, and you watched this episode time sometime around when that diagnosis occurred, how do you think you would feel? And yes, people with autism do feel, just like how they do understand love. We just don't feel slash understand it the same as neurotypical people. And in some cases, what we feel is actual love, and not what most would feel as a crush or the honeymoon phase. But due to that episode and others like it airing, many refuse to believe such a thing. Now back to my question. How do you think you would feel? Scared? Embarrassed? Ashamed? Probably. Me? I found it strange. I was young and had never heard the word autism in my life before, and had only ever heard of Asperger's from South Park. So I thought Farkle had burgers coming out of his ass, and autism was just another name for it. 
Which made me feel a little grossed out later on when I heard that my aunt and second cousin both have Asperger's. So just take a moment and picture this. I'm a little like eight to 10 year old girl spending a few days during the summer with my nan at her house out in the middle of nowhere. We're sitting on the deck out back eating snacks and enjoying some tea when my aunt shows up and you know, it's a typical conversation about life, travel, relationships. And then my aunt says the word Asperger's, how she has it. And my nan is asking about how it's going so far and is treating her and her relationships. So I'm just sitting there thinking like, yeah, how the fuck do you have a relationship? I can't imagine how your partner must have reacted when he found out burgers come out of your ass. And then my nan saw my clear disgust and asked what was wrong and if I have something against mental health. So of course with me already uncomfortable about them talking about that sort of private matter, I stayed quiet and just said that a bee was bothering me. They of course didn't believe me, but oh well. But they don't go much further into it and instead switch back over to travel. So I'm sitting there like, what the hell does Asperger's have to do with the brain? Do they like start forming in your mind and slowly make their way down? How the hell do they breathe? And had only found out what Asperger's was when I saw my dad again a little while later and told him what happened and he of course broke out laughing, straight up laughing his ass off for a good few minutes, rightfully so. And then goes on to explain that Asperger's isn't what it is in South Park and actually my cousin that used to live with us has it too. And that's why he was so weird, which I honestly never saw him as weird when he lived with us. I just saw him as this dude that likes shows from his childhood, being alone, showering only when he needed to, and eating the same things all the time. Which now that I'm older, yeah, dude definitely had autism. But he was never mean or anything. A little grouchy in the mornings, and it took him forever to get the motivation to get out of bed. But that's normal for adults, primarily the grouchy part. He even offered to show my brother and I shows from his childhood, but sadly we only watched a little bit of a show and then had to head out and never got the chance again, despite him offering continuously. Anywho, enough of me rambling. Point is, the media back then caused a lot of confusion and misinformation for kids. And as you could see by my story, it could even be the detriment of be to the detriment of their own family members. Now, of course, things have changed, and actually a study was done on a show called Atypical, a show that had come out just a few years ago. This study was conducted by the Library of Medicine, the nation, that's a typo, the National Library of Medicine, where they had autistic participants, parents of autistic people, and partners of autistic people all watch the show and tell them how accurate they believe it is and how informative they think it is. And in general, the majority said that the show was accurate and informative. Now, I watched a little bit of the show a few years ago, so it's not necessarily flesh fresh in my mind, but even then I'd say it's still pretty accurate. Granted, the family situation was different than my own, and the main character was a white male, but even then I'd still say the representation was pretty good. So I'd highly recommend giving it a watch. It could be helpful to a lot of you. Now take a moment to compare that show to Farkle's character along with anyone you know with auti anyone with autism you may know in life, just for an added branch of knowledge. And think of how accurate you re do you really think the character is to the autism community. Section 3. Causes for Autism Now I bet some of you are expecting me to link autism to a few few easy things to exclude like vaccines, microwave dinner, craft dinner, and chicken slash dino nuggets. But no, actually there is no root cause for autism. Instead, autism can be found through genetics. So congratulations, if you or your kid is autistic, then chances are someone very close to you also has it. And no, autism can't be transferred through sex. If you seriously think someone you know is acting a little autistic after they get into a relationship with an autistic person, then you need to chill out just a smidge. Because even though it is normal for people to pick up on each other's mannerisms, the autism itself is not going to be shared as well. Section 4. Issues due to autism. 
There are at least eight categories that people with autism tend to have difficulties in. They are executive functioning, sensory processing, repetitive behaviors, motor skills, perseverative thinking, social awareness, verbal and nonverbal communication, and information processing. So to start off, executive functioning. When a person has autism, it can lead to difficulties with things like planning, staying organized, self-regulating emotions, sequencing behavior, and much more. The self-regulating emotions is especially a big part that leads to a lot of people viewing autistic people negatively. And of course, one's ability to self-regulate depends on where exactly on the spectrum they are. And in order to help with understanding oneself, there are different categories of autism based around their executive functioning. They range from high, medium to low, but can also be separated by their ASD level numbers. Level 1 being high functioning, 2 being medium functioning, and 3 being low functioning. And each level of course requires more or less, fu more or less support. So for instance, a level 1 would need little support, level 2 will need a little more support, I mean a lot more support, and level 3 will need a substantial amount of support. But of course, even when one is high functioning, they may still struggle self-regulating their emotions. So it's always important to keep that in mind when writing or interacting with others. Sensory processing. There are five senses. Sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, taste, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. And it's highly likely that a lot of autistic people you know will have difficulty to some level of each of these senses or even have difficulty with at least one. For example, having sensory issues to sight might be brightness or certain colors that can disturb one's emotional processing and cause them to be upset. Sound typically includes loud noises, however, it can also include noises that neurotypical people can't even hear. For instance, the buzzing that comes from an outlet. That was a nightmare growing up. Smell might be from food they don't enjoy. For example, ever since I became vegetarian, I began feeling sick by the smell of meat, because it just smells so bad once you no longer eat it. And that smell tends to lead me to struggling to breathe and wanting to cry. Taste is especially a big one. You know when you're eating something that's, let's say, soft, but then you bite into something crunchy and you get that disgusted feeling and refuse to continue eating it? That's pretty similar to how autistic fe people feel when they don't like certain consistencies. And finally, touch. This might be a more difficult comparison compared to the last one, but you know when you're in a store and you're feeling things like blankets, scarves, etc, and you touch something you expect to be super soft but it's actually really coarse and uncomfortable? Well, when autistic people feel something they don't like, they often get that uncomfortable feeling to a whole new extent that, they, that may make them feel extremely itchy and gross and like their skin is basically melting off or that they need to itch their skin off in order to get that feeling away. It's happened to me a few times when I'm out with my boyfriend, and every time it happens I just smack and wipe my hands on his chest until the gross feeling goes away, which he laughs and gladly lets me do till I've calmed down. Though there have been a few times when I've touched something so bad that I needed a few minutes to recollect, recollect myself. Repetitive Behaviors it's normal for autistic people to have stims. Stims, which include pacing, rocking, picking, clicking, blinking, and many other actions that help them regulate. For me, my stims include rubbing my knuckles together, making popping noises, cracking my knuckles, picking at my nails, picking at my eyebrows, and much more. These help me regulate and avoid doing other things that may be disturbing to other people. For instance, I work in a daycare. And outside of work, I swear regularly with no end, but I refuse to swear anywhere near the daycare. So whenever something happens, like I hit my hand on something, accidentally pour hot water on myself, or stub my toe when I'd, and, or stub my toe when I typically shout "fuck," I instead replace it with a pop sound, like. 
And with me doing that for a while, it ended up being my go-to even outside of work. Well, with more of a K at the end, so like... Uh, and then let's move on to motor skills. Due to the developmental disorder that is autism, motor skills can also be greatly impacted. These can often result in clumsiness, being uncoordinated, unique walking patterns, low muscle tone, involuntary poor posture, issues with balance, and difficulties with riding a bike, among many more issues. Preservative thinking. This in its basic form is the positive uh, to negative thinking or dwell or dwelling on one or a group of thoughts for too long without trying slash being able to shift one's focus to something else. Perseverative thinking in itself isn't negative, but does most commonly mean that a person is latching on to a negative and self-destructive thought. And as mentioned earlier, people with autism tend to struggle self-regulating their emotions, which also means they have difficulty with turning away from ne the negative thoughts entirely, which also leads to anxiety and depression. Social awareness. This tends to be when a person is struggling to understand the people around them. For instance, they may think they're close friends with a person when in reality, they met just a few hours prior, or they may not understand sarcasm or the meaning of joke. And commonly, due to not understanding situations, they may even trauma dump right off the bat. They may have difficulty with understanding body language or facial cues, or they may struggle to understand why someone is upset when they say a loved one passes away or a pet is missing. Granted, a lot of autistic people learn to understand the emotions of others or what certain facial expressions mean because they are practically forced to due to society. But just because they do understand these social cues doesn't make them any less autistic. Even I, st even I still from time to time struggle to understand a joke or misinterpret someone's body language and facial expression. Verbal and nonverbal communication. There are lots of autistic people out there that are nonverbal, as in they can't, as in they can't slash don't speak. And in fact, there are plenty of stories of people out there that actually become nonverbal after moving out of their after moving out on their own and finally having their own safe space. The reason why some people do that is due to masking and how society forces it. So, once a person is finally safely alone, maybe with a new partner, they, maybe with a new partner, they may turn towards taking their mask off and going nonverbal. I'd honestly love to go nonverbal. It's so tiring to have to talk to people and keep up conversations. And if you guys hear my voice after I've been talking for a while, you can tell it gets quite uncomfortable as well. But sadly, with running a podcast and working in a kitchen, I'm unable to go non-verbal non permanently slash most of the time. And instead, I, when I'm all alone, I choose to not talk at all. And even my boyfriend has gotten used to me, not, to me going non-verbal from time to time to recharge and regulate myself, which I honestly love. I love not having to talk and instead just get to listen. I especially love it when he goes on ramblings about things that interest him. It's, it's just so amazing. I love listening to him. Information processing. Much like with an earlier point of autistic people sometimes struggling to understand sarcasm or jokes, they can also struggle to filter through and process information themselves. Some autistic individuals may struggle with complicated thinking which calls for the capacity to quickly link disparate brain streams. Some people can struggle to keep their focus on necessary tasks or to organize their ideas and behaviors. These challenges are exasperated by issues with using past experiences knowledge to plan one's response to a given circumstance. Those with autism frequently struggle with generalization. So, for instance, Say you're in a class and you need to find deeper, deeper meanings of things like a green colored curtain. Autism, people with autism tend to struggle with that a lot more than neurotypical people. 
So also, for example, you're at work and are told to say, do the dishes, organize the cutlery, refill the drink machines, clean the sinks, clean the floor, put away the dishes, and clean the mats. For a neurotypical person, they may be able to figure out the best order for that with no added assistance, or may even choose to do that in the order that they're told, though I wouldn't recommend it. But an autistic person will be overwhelmed with all the separate steps and will struggle with going through and figuring out what to prioritize, especially at the top of their head. So in some cases, the person will choose to put all their tasks on a notes app, and then take a few minutes to look through and filter by priority. Back at a place I used to work at, the sous chef told me he was going to be a little late the next day because he needed to take his kids to school for their first day and needed to like take pictures and all that. So he told me to turn on the gas, turn on the pilot for the oven and let it preheat to 400 degrees, turn on the fans and by that point I was getting overwhelmed. So I took out my phone and opened my notes app and explained it was just so I didn't forget. And thankfully, it was one of the few times he was understanding and let me catch up with writing it down. And then he told me to then take out the big slab of pork from the freezer, remove the plastic wrap, allow it to, and allow it around 40 minutes to thaw, then put it in the oven. And if he's not in by, I believe he said 9 a.m., then to turn down the heat to 375 and he'll take care of the rest when he comes in. And I followed that list of tasks like the goddamn Bible. And the thing is, he ended up getting in after like 10 minutes. So I didn't even need to worry about all the extra steps. Section 5. Social Life and Autism Due to how long this episode is getting, I'm instead going to leave this as the last section and then part two will be either next week or the week after that, since I'd also need to make a New Year's episode on the podcast achievements. Um, so really quickly, and I know this must be annoying, but let's take it back to the Girl Meets World uh, example in terms of social life. It is actually pretty common for autistic people to see a pushback by those around them when it comes to their diagnosis. And it is common, and it is especially common for them to hear phrases such as, you're not autistic, you're just a little special slash unique, or you're too smart to be autistic, or even, but you're too nice and understanding to be autistic, or even you're too dumb to be autistic, and many, many more. And so, of course, due to the pushback and stigma and just plain old autistic people struggling with socialization, it is actually pretty common for an autistic person to prefer being alone or at least find themselves alone quite often. And oftentimes, may not be invited to outings due to being seen as too serious or a bummer. And, oh my god. I was always heartbroken when I found out my friends hung out without me or I wasn't invited to a birthday party or even nobody showing up to my birthday parties. Yeah, it was a rough childhood. Especially since due to people not showing up, I wasn't even allowed a cake anymore. But anyway, I digress. People with autism tend to find themselves alone and due to the negative experiences and due to the negative experiences will commonly commonly have social anxiety, or feel as though they will never find love or will often end up in abusive relationships and decide that they must be the problem. So for all the people out there that have felt this way in their lives, you're not alone. I too used to be terrified that I'll end up dying alone and often ended up in relationships where I was heavily abused and cheated on, among other things. But guess what? I have found myself an absolute angel, where I had least expected it, who is patient with me and takes the time to understand how I'm feeling, how things look for, to, how things look from my perspective, and that I may need some time before having a conversation. And once I am finally ready to talk, he welcomes me with open arms and listens patiently as I get everything off my chest. Hell, even when I'm not ready to talk yet, he still is laying next to me, seeing if he's able to cuddle me or not while he waits for me to be able to talk. I would destroy the world for this man, 
because he is perfect enough for me. And of course, everyone has their flaws, obviously, but we both have flaws that the other is willing to stick through and help and support with however we can. So to all the people out there who feel alone and like they'll never feel love, you will. And that love will, may possibly come up out of nowhere. By the 7th of January, my boyfriend and I will be celebrating our one year anniversary, my longest and healthiest relationship for now and forever. Don't give up, there is still hope out there for all of you. Anyway, enough of that. That's supposed to be a Valentine's Day sentiment. Anyway, this is part one of Autism and Writing. This episode took hours of research, and honestly, with the amount of sorcerers I have, I'm thinking about just tossing all the links into a Google document since the word count of the sources alone will probably be too much for the episode description. So you'll be able to find the Google Doc in the description of this episode where you'll be able to find all the sources used for this part. And I'll be using the same doc link for the next part as well. Check out my novels on Amazon Kobo, link in description. Check out Creative Writing Club Premium on Patreon and Spotify, link in description. Check out Quill and Scroll Stash in the description. Check out the Creative Writing Club Discord server in the description. Check out my personal Instagram at dark underscore night underscore wolves. And it is now time to bring this meeting to an end and hopefully finish the rest of my short story before the new year for my 2023 short story collection.